Hello everyone and welcome back to my playlist of pathology. We are doing this from Medium Robbins and today we are going to complete the chapter of uh, skin pathology. The topic of today's video is going to be melanoma. Now, you know at the end we are discussing tumors of the skin and melanoma is the last one to discuss and uh, overall if we talk about melanoma in terms of all the skin tumors it is less common as compared to the other tumors which were basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma but it is uh, more deadly so in terms of lethality in terms of uh, being fatal this is more dangerous right so today as a result of increased public awareness of the earliest signs of skin melanomas most melanomas are cured surgically so many of them are cured but still the incidence of the lesion has increased dramatically over the past several decades now there are two reasons one is that the incidence has increased and the other thing is also the fact that we are going to now um, pick it up more early because patient care awareness has also increased and uh, uh, but overall its exposure uh, to the risk factor has also increased skin case by the way the tumor incidence overall has also increased so uh, particularly in the parts of the world where there is increasing sun exposure or higher detection rate to hamesha jab kabhi koi disease hum kehte hain na ki ye ab zyada commonly report hone lagi hai to usme do cheeze hoti hain ya to disease ka incidence bhi badh raha hai aur the other thing also is ki uska detection rate badh raha hai it's something uh, we saw in different tumors such as breast cancer jab breast cancer awareness programs launch hue puri duniya mein aur breast cancer ki screening self breast examination awareness in the patient ye sab cheeze jab badhi to suddenly breast cancer ka incidence badh gaya so ab ho sakta hai breast cancer ka incidence real mein bada ho ya ye bhi ho sakta hai ki breast cancer ka detection rate badh gaya ho jiski wajah se uska overall incidence badhta hua nazar aa raha hai so vigorous surveillance agar kisi bhi disease ki shuru kar de to suddenly uske numbers badh jate hain because now you are picking up more patients uh, because of increased surveillance programs okay agar hum pathogenesis ki baat kare to just like other cutaneous malignancies melanoma is also caused by a common risk factor which is ultraviolet radiation so ultraviolet light induces dna damage that leads to stepwise acquisition of driver mutations so driver mutations are the mutations which actually drive the cancer formation so they are the primary uh, basic mutations because of which Uh, tumor happens so the incidence is highest in sun exposed uh, parts of the body such as uh, head and neck region such as uh, periphery skin and in geographic locales such as australia where sun exposure is high because of the equatorial position and fair skin people are more prone intense intermittent exposure at an early age is particularly harmful hereditary predisposition has also been reported 5 to 10% of the cases as already discussed under familiar dysplastic nevus syndrome mere pichli video dekhiye guys pehle se video banayi hui hai for example germline mutation in cdk N2A locus which is present in this chromosomal position I found in as many as 40% so because this is so common it is worth remembering the name of the mutation otherwise it looks very very complicated now this complex locus encodes two tumor suppressor p16 um, which is a cyclin dependent kinase inhibitor that regulate uh, g1c s phase of the cell cycle ka transition so ye ek tumor suppression hai jo ke डिस्टर्ब होती है मेलानोमा पाथवे में एंड द अदर वन इज द रेटिनो ब्लास्ट टूमर दिस इज ऑल्सो अ ट्यूमर सप्रेसर जीन दिस इज वेर एवर इट इज एक्टिव सो इन द एक्टिव स्टेट एन पी फोर्टीन के साथ मिलकर इट ऑगमेंट्स द एक्टिविटी ऑफ पी फिफ्टी थ्री ट्यूमर सप्रेसर विच इज एन अदर ट्यूमर सप्रेसर जीन सो ये पूरा साइकिल चलता है कि अगर पी सिक्सटीन भी नहीं है तो एक ट्यूमर सप्रेसर का ही दैन देर इज नो रेटिनो ब्लास्टोमा so if retinoblastoma is mutated then there is uh, decreased activity of a uh, very important guardian gene which is p53 and whenever uh, tumor suppressor genes are affected then there are chances of getting more and more tumors okay now key phases of melanoma development are marked by radial and vertical growth and this is an important topic because this is tested in examination what do we mean by radial growth what do we mean by vertical growth 
to some extent the names explain them right the earliest recognizable phase of melanoma development is proposed to consist of lateral expansion of melanocytes along the dermoepidermal junction you know this is the basement membrane and here is the dermis so here is the uh, epidermal basal layers and then there will be superficial layers so this junction is known as dermoepidermal junction where dermis fuses with epidermis so dermoepidermal junction um, we have melanocytes here so melanocyte is spread in the lateral direction and this is uh, what is the very very initial phase okay so uh, let me redraw the diagram to give a more clear concept so if these are the basal cells in between the basal cells we have uh, uh, these melanocytes so what happens is that number of melanocytes increase and they start replacing the basal cells now these are all the melanocytes and this is called lentiginous hyperplasia of melanocytes so this is also called radial growth and this is one of the very very initial uh, phases of melanoma spread this then progresses to phase of melanoma in situ which is marked by radial growth uh, within the epidermis often for a prolonged period of time and then it goes down deeper uh, so if you look at this diagram for example so this is how the normal skin looks like um, this is the basement membrane this is the dermis because here is a blood vessel and this is the epidermis and these are the basal cells here sitting on the top of the basement membrane and interspersed amongst the basal uh, cell types are these melanocytes so if melanocytes start increasing in number uh, you see they are replacing the uh, basal cells of the epidermis and this is only happening at the dermal epidermal junction they are all still sitting on the basement membrane and this type of spread of melanocyte is known as lentiginous hyperplasia of melanocytes so lentiginous hyperplasia and then what happens is um, um, it starts becoming uh, more and more proliferative so it becomes dysplastic nevus this is how it looks like and then when the proliferation further goes on it starts going in the vertical fashion you see this is then the full-blown radial as well as vertical growth of melanocytes and then they start going into the blood vessel so they are invading the blood vessels and from there they will go to different parts of the body which is what we call metastasis okay so vertical growth when they go deeper radial growth when they go in this direction now DNA sequencing of familial and sporadic cases including cases that appear to have arisen from benign nevi although only a very small percentage of benign nevi go into the malignant uh, form of melanoma uh, most of the melanomas are de novo melanoma from day one actually the initiating event appears to be an activating BRAF or RAS mutation so not only that the tumor suppressors are mutated in the pathogenesis of melanoma some uh, proliferative genes are also mutated so they increase proliferation right in the vast majority of cases this produces only benign nevus but can go to melanoma in situ and melanoma formation so this is something easy to understand no big deal there so if you look at this this is a nice diagram depicting molecular evolution of cutaneous melanoma so if you um, uh, look at the first row which tells you the histology wise there are benign lesions then there can be uh, lesions which develop atpia so different cells develop atpia can go and lead to radial growth of melanoma then vertical growth and then tumor metastasis and at each stage it will be nice if you can remember the mutation so initial uh, melanocytes can become benign melanocytes uh, developing benign tumor called nevus here we have uh, important implications of BRAF and RAS mutation and if uh, this continues and there is telomerase activation then cells uh, start to survive and then there is cellular ATP so whenever there is telomerase activation these cells become kind of immortal then you get tumor suppressor loss also retinoblastoma here and then for metastasis p53 is gone as well so it's a very nice uh, diagram telling you different histological stages of melanoma and then at each stage what is the molecular event happening okay and as you progress into uh, from simple to complex pathology from benign to malignant lesion you see the number of mutations are increasing and this is what we call the tumor mutation burden so it keeps on increasing as you get towards the malignant disorder 
okay similarly the copy number alterations in the mutation so you can get all these data by doing next generation sequencing these days and then um, throughout the range ultraviolet radiation has a role to play so that overall is a very nice image and i would like you to spend some time over here okay and this is all then detailed in the text here. Okay, kiss stage per P16 is gone, kiss stage per P53 is gone. Okay, so uh, less common melanoma that arises in non sun exposed areas. Uh, it also involves mucosal surfaces. And that's important for you to know that melanoma does not only involve uh, skin, it also involves mucosal surfaces. Uh, it can be anal canal, it can be rectum. The most common initiating mutation for such uh, melanomas are, are different from the ones in the skin. So, for example, gain of function mutation in KIT receptor tyrosine kinase. Um, melanomas arising in the uvea of the eye, that is another very common place for melanoma. You have mutations different here, GNAC and uh, GNA11. In addition, it has also been speculated that melanomas express neoantigens, which means neoantigens that should be subject to recognition by the immune system. If uh, follows that for melanoma to develop, tumor cells must acquire the ability to either suppress or evade the yeah, this is true for a lot of tumors as well so that's the general principle of tumor immunology that if this is a tumor cell it is expressing an antigen um, if the immune cells recognize that antigen they're going to kill the cell so the tumor cell need to go under the phenomena of immune evasion so they uh, try to make themselves blind to the immune system right the importance of immune evasion has been proven by the response of many advanced melanomas to immune checkpoint inhibitor. So this is one of the tumor where immune therapy is also becoming very, very successful because we believe that there is a role of a lot of uh, new antigens in development of these tumors. Clinically, although most of these lesions arise in the skin, I have told you that in other develop hote mucosal surfaces such as anogenital mucosal surfaces in the eye, in the meninges, even in the esophagus. So these are all the sites where you can see melanoma. Okay, Melanoma of the skin usually is asymptomatic. Sirf nazar aata hai, bad looking lesion. Um, there is rapid enlargement of the lesion. There is itching in the lesion. Development of a new pigmented lesion. Irregularity of border. Variation of color within the pigmented lesion. So if you look at this diagram, and try to compare it with uh, one of the previous diagrams that I show you. So this, for example, is a particularly benign lesion. You see, nice borders, uniform color. Now compare it with uh, this particular lesion. So all irregular, well, patchy, we don't know what's happening here. No, not circumcised, not uniform in coloration. The patient will tell you it is itchy as well. So think about melanoma in such cases. Now these principles are expressed in the so-called ABCs of melanoma. Asymmetry, so there is no, uh, you know, circular rounded border. There is asymmetrical edges. So if you look at the diagram, this is all asymmetrical edges you see here. B is the border, so there is irregular border, and the color is a changing color. So these are the ABCs of melanoma, you should know this. The probability of metastasis is predicted by measuring the depth of invasion in millimeters of the vertical growth uh, phase nodule from top of the granular layer to the overlying dermis. So this thickness actually tells you what prognosis kya If it's much more deeper, bad prognosis. Metastasis risk is also increased in tumors with a high mitotic rate. So if the cells have uh, more mitotic figures, obviously that's a bad state of affairs, okay? Now, sentinel lymph node biopsy is usually done. This is usually the first draining lymph node. So if this is the skin area involved and that's the first lymph node which is draining this area, biopsy it and see, it tells you if the tumor is aggressive or not. Uh, how, if the tumor cells are seen in this lymph node area, the tumor is aggressive because it has reached to the lymph node, okay? Now, agents, that selectively inhibit BRAF and KIT have produced dramatic response in patients with metastatic tumors. So since these two are also involved in the initiation of the lesion, you see BRAF is involved in here. So if you give inhibitors of these uh, proteins, then they may help in the treatment of melanoma. Most recently, there are immune checkpoint inhibitors which are being used and immune cells are being targeted. So I'll talk about this more when we talk about immunotherapy for different cancers.
cancers. But remember, melanoma, although not as common as a squamous cell carcinoma or basal cell carcinoma, it is still a very deadly tumor, and that's why it's very important. Okay. So last thing, let's talk about some morphological features. So unlike benign nevi, melanomas often exhibit striking variations in pigmentation. And you look at this diagram. Here it is uh, less pigmented. Here it is more pigmented. Things like that. Okay. The borders are irregular. We talked about this, and um, that's not new for you now. So increasing thickness incre strongly, increasingly correlates with worse biologic behavior. So the more deep it is, the more thick the tumor is, uh, it's going to have worse prognosis. Okay, individual melanoma cells usually are considerably larger than the nevi. It's not something very important. They have large nuclei. We know that. Okay, that's fine. Uh, at the periphery of the nuclear membrane, this prominent cherry red eosinophilic nucleoli. Okay, so they usually don't test you on examination for such purposes. But this Breslau thickness is important. The more deep uh, melanocytic cells, the more uh, uh, you know. The worse is the prognosis. Right, so that's all about skin pathology. Pretty important chapter, guys. And we'll start the next chapter very soon. Take care of yourself.